Hello, I'm John Mike Namara. Welcome to Hursley, and this is the IBM Messaging Hangout. Uh, we're going to start in about five minutes, so if you're a little bit early, um, just hang on, and we'll kick off shortly. Uh, but uh, I'm John, and this is Leigh. Hello. Hello. So please do feel free to talk about yourselves. We'll be about four minutes before we start. So how are you, Leigh? You all right? Yeah, sir? I'm good. A good day? I'm, um, too many interrupts, but yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, a good yes. day. Good, 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 good. Excellent. Did have an impromptu call to go and talk to a load of customers who were in about the NQ appliance. Really? It's always fun. That's nice. Cool. Well, there's so much interest in the NQ appliance at the moment. So. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, buddy. That's really cool. I saw um, Anthony Beardsmore's and John Colgrave's demonstration of the NQ appliance at Hurst Summit. Mm, yes. That was really good. It's, it's, it's good to to have a product that you can actually see yeah. working. And turn off and on and, on and off. Well, and yes, then. it's it's a, the mark of a confident presenter to um, to power off <laughs> in the middle of your demonstration <laughs> one of the boxes. Yeah, well, that, that was, uh, yeah. The thing is, I was presenting directly after them, and uh, they were kind of running over a bit, and someone said, oh, we've got to close it down now, the next presenter's waiting, and you hear this, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> there's going to be a tough crowd, tough crowd. Well, they were obviously just wishing that they had had you on earlier. Ah, that must be it. That was probably it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was good, actually. That was a really good presentation that they did. It's always nice when you do something like physical to the box. You know? It's really, really. Well, good. I mean, demos always are risky anyway. There's, I mean, sometimes it's better to have a failure in a demo because it it yeah. shows that it's live. Yeah, it's real. That's but true. Uh, but no, it was it, it ran perfectly. Yeah, it, it worked. Fine, and it yeah. failed over when they um, powered one of the appliances off. Yeah, yeah, that was. What more uh, can you ask? I was watching that, and I thought that was that was awesome. That was, even, but John Colgrave, he was like stone faced, wasn't he? No, oh, yeah. well, yeah. I guess he'd tried it before. <laughs> Maybe he'd give it a kick. <laughs> You'd hope. No, <laughs> he was that confident in on that. Uh, yeah, if you're tuning in, uh, we'll be starting in a couple of minutes. Um, Please do hang on, talk about yourselves. Uh, I'm John Orr, this is Leif Davison, and the topic today is security for messaging. Yeah, yeah, there was, um, I don't yeah. know, was, it, was that a week ago, that Hersey Summit, was it two weeks ago? Um, that's a very good question. <laughs> the world is going so fast. Nice by, it? But you were presenting too, weren't you? I was presenting as well, yes. Uh, I'm sure I can probably recall what, I'm pre what I was presenting. I was riveting. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, was a, it, was a, it was an overview of, of um, MQ and messaging uh, and a little bit of a roadmap because the customers are under right. non-disclosure. So we told them a little bit about some of the exciting stuff they're doing in the future. We can, uh, we can do that. I mean, if this is a security... Um, Hang out, John. Are we going to ask people for a password to join? Oh, I think so. Yes. <laughs> Nobody join unless you've got a password. Password of a password with a zero because they are the most secure types of passwords. Oh, no, don't tell everyone my password. <laughs> <laughs> you have to wonder how many people out there go, oops, better change like that quickly. <laughs> so, guys, we'll be kicking off in approximately one minute. I'm John McNamara. This is Leif Davison. The topic today is messaging security. Uh, please do feel free to tweet in any questions on the hashtag IBM messaging. And we'll be kicking off in exactly one minute. So stay tuned. Uh, yeah, the, the um, yeah, I must I really enjoyed this summit. I had a number of customers over to um, play MQ Quest. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The um, it's a it's a quest game set in a pastiche of Hursley, where you. <laughs> no, there are so too many, many jokes. jokes. No, there are too many, many jokes. jokes, and I try to fit as many as I could into a POC. Um, uh, where you have to save your space, the spacecraft that we've built from being stolen. You do that by answering questions on Messenger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, I know. It was, I must admit, it was, it was, it was pretty awesome. Let's ask myself. And were any of those questions on MQMS? Ah, oh, well, thankfully, you are here now to answer those. There you go. Should we start off? I think we should. Let's start. It must oh. be about time. Okay, so uh, hello, everyone. I'm Welcome to Hursley. I'm John McNamara. I'm one of the senior events in the lab, and I'm here today with Leif Davison. Hello, Leif. Hello, John. How are you, buddy? I'm very well, thank you. Glad. As ever. Awesome. 
<laughs> Can you tell us a bit about yourself and what you do here, though? Uh, so I'm the product manager, senior product manager here for the, the MQ product family. So I, I sort of work a lot with, with customers, talk to them about their needs, I look at the market needs, and I work with our development team to make sure that as we go forward and continue to enhance our, our MQ product family, it's it's really delivering the right product for customers. Fantastic. Um, so you sound like the right person to ask these security questions off of that. You can always ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> and please feel free to tweet any tricky questions you have on security. They're more than happy to answer. So yes, today's topic is indeed messaging security. Uh, we do re seriously invite you to tweet any questions on the hashtag IBM messaging. So um, Leif, it's probably good to give a bit of context in terms of messaging security. Um, it does sound obviously important, but what's the context around it? Why is it so important? Well, if, if you think about what MQ is used for, um, it's, it's really used for business critical um, exchange of data between applications. And business critical tends to mean this is actually important data that is not only important to your business, it's generally customer data, and, and it's not information that you want uh, to you know, have out in the open. So yeah. security is very much at the heart of, of MQ. In fact, it's typically one of the reasons why people choose IBM MQ over any of the other solutions in the space because of the focus that we have on security. This is, after all, you know, a core part of someone's business, and, and therefore they want to make sure that the product is secure. Fair enough. Cool. So in terms of messaging security, if we step down a level, how was that kind of manifest with an MQ itself? Okay, so if you, again, if you think about what MQ is doing, it's it's acting as, as essentially a messaging layer to connect applications together to allow them to exchange information. And it's very much is that allowing the applications to exchange it. You know, you need to, as you're setting up MQ, you need to, uh, connect one application to another and to authorize those connections. So you can't just simply, you know, say, yeah, yeah, everybody come, everybody exchange information. You specifically identify which applications are exchanging which messages. Yeah. And you do that by defining security or you know, user IDs and passwords and which program can connect to which other program. Yeah. So it's it, there is a whole security infrastructure that goes with setting up MQ. Fair enough. I remember, I remember Morag um, did a podcast ages ago take, talk, walking me through uh, authentication and authorization, the, the difference between the two. And I think, yeah, it was. It, it could sometimes, it could sound a, a, a fairly complicated thing, um, but what are we doing to try and make that as, as painless as possible? Well, complexity is, is actually very, you know, it's very important because if you make your security too complex, people turn it off. And that's, of course, completely yeah. against yeah. what you want them to do. You want them to make their systems as secure as they want them to be. Everybody has their own, you know, thoughts about how secure their systems need to be. And, you know, it has always been possible to make MQ very secure. Where we've actually tried to focus over the last few years, the last few releases, is not just increasing that amount of security, but actually making it easier to use so that people are encouraged to use more. We've, yeah. uh, we have made some fairly drastic uh, changes over the last few releases, particularly in MQ version 7.1. We got rid of, people would put in a lot of their own code which obviously is fine, but it, it means there's a big burden in terms of maintaining that. So we replaced the need for a lot of that by adding in a lot of features, but also, very importantly, we turned security on by default. Ooh, okay. Which yeah, yeah. Okay. did lead to some you know, questions, obviously. Uh, and yeah, there were all sorts of other aspects, but turning it on by default is very much a statement. You know, you're saying, yeah. Now, we want you to run with security. Security is important to us. It's important to you. You need to make a decision that you're turning security off right? rather than, than you know, us making you make the decision to turn it on. So that was a very big change. And then in version 8, we, we did another very big change, which was providing the ability to do LDAP for both authentication and authorization. Okay. So instead of needing to 
define all those user IDs and passwords in every system that you set up. You can define them once in a central repository and use that as your authentication store. Again, it makes it more secure mm -hmm. and it drastically eases the burden uh, in terms of complexity. So should encourage customers to use more security. Yeah, and it's also a great best practice to develop apps with um, the bugging structure with the security in mind rather than just add it on at the end and kind of hope for the best. And uh, see if it's, it works. it's very much at the heart of the product. You, you know, you really, um, you know, we know what NQ is used for and security is very much central to that. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Um, so we've spoken about the infrastructure security, but um, you, you hear about it a lot in the news of various breaches of you know, unfortunate uh, companies um, kind of reeling from the effects of a data breach, security breach. Um, so let's say you know, the worst comes to the worst, you have a breach, what else does, does MQ kind of give you uh, to, to, to protect you? Yeah, um, so data breaches, as you say, you, you hear about them almost every day, sometimes it seems, and obviously, there are all sorts of causes for data breaches. I, I read an IBM study just just uh, earlier this year um, that basically said it was split between this, yes, there are external people trying to maliciously hack in, um, but also there can be errors done um, accidentally by your staff yeah. or just system failures when something goes wrong and you know, all three of those cases can mean that your, your critical business data, your customer data, can be exposed and uh, obviously from MQ point of view we are dealing with a lot of that critical data we don't want to you know be the cause of those sleepless nights that some of the C-level execs have yeah um, and so yes you can use MQ security but there is there is something more that you can you can do um, with MQ Tell me okay <laughs> it's, it's something called MQ's uh, advanced message security grand um, and, and this is, it's specifically designed so that from end to end, from application to application, again, that's what MQ is doing, you send data from one application, you receive it in another application, that throughout that entire journey, so every for every aspect of when MQ is responsible for your data, yeah. you can ensure that that data is encrypted, and the only place where it's decrypted is in the receiving application. Right, okay, so Eve, so I guess that really, that's significant because, okay, let's say there's not a, an intentional breach, let's say, for example, data's exposed, by mistake, you're still protected. Yes, okay. I mean, there's, there's lots of different aspects to it, and it, it's so important that our, our customers you know, are aware of this and, and can take advantage of it, because, as you said, there could be accidental breaches, there could be glitches at any point. Um, uh, and you know, there are all sorts of layers in which MQ provides security. Obviously, most people think, oh, I need to secure it as it flows over the wire from one system to another. Yeah. We've had encryption you know, on, on what we call those channels uh, for, for a long time. So you, we've always had some level of security. Where AMS really can make a difference is if you think about how MQ works, you're sending a message, a, a message header saying where you're sending it, and then the contents of what you're sending from one system through MQ to one or more destination systems. But because MQ provides capabilities like persistence, so in case of failure, we write the message to disk. Right. But what MQ writes is what you send it. And obviously, um, if you send it, data that's, that's in the clear, although it's protected over the wires, as, as I say, we encrypt it as it's on the wires, when it's received by the MQ server, the queue manager, and written to the queue, that's what it is. And if there is some sort of breach, either deliberate or malicious or accidental, um, and someone gains access to that, that disk, you know, the data that's on that disk can be exposed. That's not a good thing. Sure. So I was reading um, one of your blogs, Life, <laughs> and you had a great uh, analogy for this which was to do with it was um i i it's titled did you remember to lock your car yeah i, I parked my car in a garage at night and the garage is locked okay secure isn't it yeah but i also i click my little clicker on the remote control and i lock my car yeah so that 
the data inside the garage is is secure so that even if the garage is breached you know my, my data is protected same you know you could you know you could take your car to the airport park it in a in a in a you know in a secure car park they say it's secure you can trust them but yeah. you know what i think you're probably going to lock your car as well yeah for sure so a what ams does is it says i'm going to send from you know one application to another application i'm going to send this data but the data itself is going to be encrypted by you know at the point at which it's sent from one application mm -hmm. And the only time when it's going to be decrypted, and that's just the contents, yep. is when it's received by the only application that's authorized to receive it. Fair enough. And what's important is you think, well, I could do that. I, you know, I can write myself a little encryption routine in each application. But managing that, deploying that, is complex. Plus, you need to change the applications. The magic with MQAMS is there's no change to the application. It's done for you. You define policy in MQ, and MQ recognizes when you're going to send a, a message that needs to be encrypted. And the MQ client that's embedded within the application will do the encryption for you completely without impacting the application itself. Nice. And the receiving MQ application, again, the MQ client does that for you. So no change to the application, but your data is secure end to end. Lovely. That's how well. That sounds fantastic. So, Leif, um, I'll put the link to your blog in the video notes. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll put other. I'll put the references to MQMS and MQ in there as well. Um, do you fancy taking a question too from Twitter? I think that might be good. Okay, let's have a look at the feed. It's always been quite a popular topic when I talk to customers about <laughs> this. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to do a very quick search. Um, Okay, so is MQAMS available for all platforms MQ supported? That's that's a good question because um, if you think about what AMS is providing, um, it's allowing an application you know that's connected to MQ in one place to send um, the data to another application somewhere else. Um, frankly, if you want this to work, then you need to make sure that AMS is available to all of your MQ instances all around. And until um, recently, until the MQ uh, version 8 came out, it, AMS wasn't available on our IBM i platform. Right. So what used to be the AS400. Um, and you know, frankly, that was, that was always disappointing because you thought, well, hang on. We say that, frankly, we think that all customers should be using AMS. Um, and yet we weren't making it available on, on a platform that's still so important for so many uh, many people. Fair enough. Uh, so it is now available across all of our, our major platforms, ZOS, all of the distributed platforms. Plus our new announcement this year about the MQ appliance. Ooh, yes. Uh, if, you, if, if our customers uh, and our, our viewers recall the MQ appliance <laughs> uh, discussion that we had just a, a little while ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, the MQ appliance is is an MQ queue manager in you know in a physical box, but we've actually included AMS as a standard part of of that offering. So if you buy an MQ appliance, you know that AMS is is in there. For all the other platforms, um, you actually have if you install MQ on any of the other platforms, any really recent release, uh, AMS will be there. But it's separately entitled. So, in other words, if, if you're going to start defining policies to use it, uh, please make sure that you've you've purchased that the entitlement to do so, and you can either do that separately with a AMS entitlement part, or if you've bought MQ Advanced, which is our bundled offering, yeah, you are entitled to to use AMS as part of that. So, it's it's available on all platforms, and there are various ways in which you you can get it uh, depending on exactly what platform you Fantastic. Leif, it's been an absolute joy as always chat about this, buddy. Okay, good so talking to you, today. and hopefully people found it useful. Yeah. We'll take care, everyone. Bye-bye now. Bye. Cheerio.